You're right, guys. So just a quick reminder of what we're actually doing in the market. Yeah. So, um, so in the forex market, and what you're attempting to do, as I guess traders, um, is is first of all you're trying to understand value. First of all, first and foremost, yeah, why you should be buying something at a certain exchange rate. Yeah, this is price and this is time. Yeah, that's that's first and foremost. That's how right, that's why we do our fundamental sentiment analysis. And then what we're going to do is we're looking at a price chart. Once we've picked our direction, so for example, we want to be buyers of you know I don't know dollar. CAD, for example, yeah, we think that the dollar is a buy because of certain fundamental um, sentiment reasons, and the or the CAD is a sell, etc. Right? <clears throat> well, mainly we're looking at buying just undervalued, right? So, you know, let's say for example, we look at the price chart and price is all the way up here, yeah. Now, we know that higher low swing points are the source of the, the the move that push prices higher above what would have been an expensive area. So pullbacks are usually what we would term as an expensive area or a potential expensive area because there is no more there's no more demand there. Yeah, or there was profit taking or or just in general buyers didn't see that this price point, whatever this price point was, was worth buying up here. Yeah. So you know that's the reason for or one of the reasons for a potential pullback obviously, obviously again <clears throat> sorry there's profit taking there's other things going on etc positioning but once prices go past what is known as, as a previously expensive area yeah and keeps going higher then this now becomes a nice demand zone because if price ever comes back down to that zone that would be where the source of the strong demand came from and the same thing repeats here yeah <clears throat> so that was an expensive area and until price makes new highs the best area to buy is not at a past expensive area it's not here that's not the best area yeah it's going to be here or wherever the obvious the daily or weekly swing point is so when prices come back down into a zone yeah when prices come back down into a zone <clears throat> Sorry, all we're doing really as, uh, as supply and demand traders is because we've picked our direction and we want to be a buyer of the dollar, all we're doing is we're understanding why um, <clears throat> there's, you know, uh, this is a, this price point because at this point back here, whatever, you know, wherever that was, maybe that was a week ago or two ago on the timeline. And if prices come back down there a week or two later, is this still a bargain? Now, none of us know for certain. There is no certainties. Plus, you also have, um, you know, liquidity um, issues within the market. Hence why we have stop hunting going on. Yeah. So when we get to a level, there are different ways to approach this. There are, you know, a couple of, of ways to approach this. So we approach it by our general understanding of supply and demand. What makes this area a strong area potentially of supply and demand? And we go through our odds enhancers. And then what we look towards is either one, <clears throat> we look for obviously, you know, our our, our second odds enhancers, you know, RSI extremes, volume divergence when prices come back down to here. Yeah, so that would be just our typical supply and demand strategy where, you know, and then we look for our candlestick entries, etc. after we've gone through dynamic diagonal, um, you know, support resistance, um, etc. <clears throat> and confluences in this area. That's one way of entering. The second way of entering at a level would be, um, for example, caps, capture pain relief. So depending on the uh, actual setup as well that happened here, because you can also get, this could be a CPR zone. It could be a breakout CPR zone on a lower time frame that caught traders short. And then we would be looking for obviously the relief. You know, this would be the capture point. This might be the pain. And then this would be 
the relief. Yeah. And we understand that at the relief area is where there should be more, you know, demand and supply from a, um, uh, a, a psychological and um, uh, supply and demand equation perspective, because that's what the capture pain relief um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, strategy, you know, is is understanding why technically there should be more demand here from a zero sum game perspective and a technical analysis perspective, or what we're looking for is um, is a stop hunt. Yeah, is a stop hunt. Depending on again the market state, um, you know how the market looks etc and then we get potential stop hunts going on yeah at that level of potential you know demand demand etc and then stop hunt below the market and then we look to get involved in that area there the, the stop hunt um setup is obviously the 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 absolute bargain basement prices as you guys know when we can get some um, when we get some good entries on the stop hunt, you can get some very, very good, you know, 10, 15, 20 to one type trades. Some very good trades. But the point is, is that none of us really know, and let me just zoom in a little bit, right? None of us really know, yeah, if this level is gonna work, because at the end of the day, there's there's hundreds of thousands of participants in, um, in, in the market, right? And there's trillions and trillions of dollars that go, that, you know, pass through every day and every week, yeah, in, in any kind of single market, right, or the forex market as a whole. Now, is this a bargain or, you know, would this be a bargain for certain? None of us know. And if it isn't, all we do is we get involved here, yeah, and we and we let go of the trade. Once we see our trade set up, we have to just let go of a trade. A good trade, a perfect trade can lose and a really terrible setup, a random setup can win. Yeah, none of us know the outcome of any one trade, but we, what we do know is that over time, with good risk reward management um, and and profit targets, yeah, we will and we do eventually see the equity curve to the upside. And when, if this, for example, level fails, all we're doing is we're going down to the next zone. And as long as, again, fundamentally and sentiment-wise. This is, you know, the, the, what was happening here is still pretty much similar here because sentiment, yeah, so sentiment can push prices to where we want to be biased. And I'll give you an example of that. All right, so they could, you could have negative sentiment. Let's say, for example, um, the dollar. Right, and this is how traders mostly trade um, fundamentals. What they'll do is they'll go to somewhere like Forex Factory and then go to, um, they'll go to, I don't know, let's say for example, uh, manufacturing, right? Manufacturing and the manufacturing will be, um, will have a negative number, let's say, or, or, or a less than uh, forecasted number. Right? So then traders will go, oh, you know what? And prices will be at this point. Yeah. Or oh, actually, no. Prices won't be there yet, but prices will be somewhere up here, and um, prices will be coming down to this point. Yeah, because there might be a, a news announcement that might come out that might be negative. But overall, yeah, if you're looking at retail sales, you're looking at home buying, you're looking at you know GDP and all those you know other data points actually make up GDP and interest rates, etc. The, the, if you're taking into account all the other data points, yeah, the dollar is actually very good. So it might have just one or two, you know, bad data points out of maybe you know, ten of the main data points that are looked at when it comes to you know um, the dollar, the economy, etc. Yeah. So two maybe bad sentiment ones, but you know, eight really good ones. So. What happens is, is that remember there's there's a game being played here, and the game is to buy at value. Nobody wants to buy at highs, especially the financial institutions. They want to buy on pullbacks. That's just the way that it goes. So when traders see that sentiment 
is pushing prices to a level, what they will do is they will follow the short-term sentiment. And who is taking the other side of your trade? It's the, the, the financial institutions. When prices start going against you know, the dollar, all they're doing is just accumulating at a level or at certain prices. Now, again, none of us know how much they're accumulating, what, you know, um, and, and where the market is going to turn. But when prices start going against, um, you know, uh, or start, you know, trending in the opposite direction or if a level breaks, yeah, it doesn't mean that you should be shorting the dollar unless you understand why you should be shorting the dollar from a fundamental or sentiment perspective, if you know what I mean. It's easier yeah, for traders to just understand, or easy for me anyway, to understand value. Where I was getting caught a lot of times was chasing price, yeah? Chasing price is really a fool's game, yeah? I'm not saying that people don't make money or can't make money in it. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything about, you know, um, you know, how you will make money. I'm not a financial advisor, it's not financial advice. But where, personally, I struggled with um, trading before I understood fundamentals and value was chasing price, yeah? And, the you know, it's, it's, it's proven, yeah, that most traders don't consistently make money because most traders consistently follow price. If you go on YouTube, every single, I'll say every single, but pretty much the majority of YouTubers will are talking about price. They don't talk about value because value takes time to play out. And most traders who try to make money quick, fast, etc., right, haven't got time for to, to, to trade value. But if you can trade value and understand why you're buying something at a price point, so I can take one trade here, let's say, for example, that loses, that's fine, yeah? If price come down here and the fundamentals are still exactly the same, there's some negative sentiment, but the fundamentals, the bigger picture overall is still brilliant. This trade can then turn into what? A, a nice five, six, seven, eight to one. That's what, you know, Warren Buffett does. That's what all of the, you know, all the, all the, all the great traders do. And I'm not saying that, you know, there aren't great traders that 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 don't trade technicals. You can read market wizards, etc. There's there's loads of traders that trade technical analysis, but what they what they learn to do, regardless of whether you are trading value or you're trading just purely price action, is actually holding trades. It's holding trades for the long term. Yeah. So if you're struggling to understand why you should hold a trade, and most traders, once they get into a trade that goes their direction, because they have nothing else to look at to determine um, when they should take profit, yeah, or how far the price is going to go, what they do is they look at the, the arbitrary figure of, you know, of what they've actually made. So they've risked, let's say, for example, 50 pounds, yeah, and they're up, you know, on their trade, 70 pounds, yeah. Now, 70 pounds, there's fear of losing that 70 pound. And remember that unrealized profit, because it's unrealized until you actually take the profit, you know, could, um, uh, most people are saying, okay, let me take this 70 pounds, or let me take this 90 pounds, or wherever it is, a two to one, etc. But imagine you've, you know, you're at the, you're at the backdrop, you're the backdrop of, um, of really understanding um, why you should be holding for longer and I'll give you an example of this matter of fact and this is a trade that I'm currently in on silver and you guys know you guys saw the trade entry on silver um, a couple of weeks back and uh, how we were attempting I know a few of you are actually in the uh, in this uh, silver and gold trade you're in a gold trade but I'm in a silver trade yeah and this is currently my risk reward yeah I'm currently up something like what a 13 to 1 at the peak you know, I was up an 18 to one, but that's neither here nor there. What what the point of this is, is understanding, and I got in at the, you know, at, around here, and I was prepared to get in several times, a couple of times. Now, why would I, first of all, the question is why buy silver in the first place? So buying silver in the first place, silver is like gold considered a safe haven asset, yeah? So when you see prices do something like this, yeah? It was just really, if you understood that this was a buying opportunity, potential buying opportunity, then you could look at areas like this as areas to look for long trades. And if we zoom, maybe zoom out, yeah. 
there was potentially you know some sort of stop hunt or a level that you could have got involved in right we, we took advantage of um well, i took advantage of a of a bit of a stop hunt on a whole on time frame around here so i kind of got again fortunate none of us know which one's going to work out etc but the point being is that i can now have the confidence to hold this trade yeah to hold this trade to the highs now why would i hold this trade rather than you know taking profit at a two to one or three to one yeah why would i have not taken that that trade because fundamentally I believe, and what happens typically in a risk-off scenario, which we're in at the moment, yeah, with um, the coronavirus, etc., gold, uh, gold and silver should typically go higher. So when it was going lower, and you know we saw this, what was my thought? Was my thought to chase price? No, it was really just look for buying opportunities because price is not always a reflection of value and value isn't always not a reflection of price, yeah? So when prices go lower into certain zones or areas and I have a fundamental view, I might lose a couple of times, one, two, three times, four times. But when you're getting potential 13, 14, 15 to ones, 20 to one, 35 to one type trades. And I'm going to be holding this for the, I'll be swing trading this for the, for the, uh, um, for the foreseeable future until possibly, you know, there's obviously the coronavirus, um, fingers crossed it does, uh, um, uh, uh subside, etc. But if the coronavirus starts to get worse around the world, then I'm just going to keep holding. Yeah. So the point is, is that I can keep holding a trade, yeah, I can keep holding a trade rather than taking, you know, 70, 80 pounds, 100 pounds, 200 pounds, whatever it is. Yeah, I can hold the trade for longer because I understand the fundamentals behind why something is undervalued. Yeah, that's and that's all we're doing. Yeah, as supply and demand traders, we have to be, you know, choosy about what trades and what levels we, we take. Yeah, and understand where the value is, yeah, or potentially is. Are we going to get it right all the time? No, of course not. But I don't mind entering a, a level a couple of times, losing there, but understanding that down here I can get seven, eight, nine, ten to ones, twelve to ones, you know, and that covers those losses. And that's all we're trying to do is pick a direction. Is that a level? Does the market agree with us that at its value, yes or no? No, brilliant, okay, cool. We look for the next level. No, okay, cool. We look for the next level. And if it is, then we just then 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 we you know we try to ride it for as for as far as we can. That's all we're doing as traders. And I know it's not easy, it seems like a very, very simple concept, and as you know, it's not easy because psychologically it's not easy. Um you know, time-wise and patience and discipline-wise, it's not easy, yeah? But this is what we do simply, in, in simple terms, is what we're doing. The strategies are the strategies, we can learn those, etc. But fundamentals, sentiment, value, yeah? Where are we with price? Is price going, you know, in the opposite direction? Brilliant because that allows us to buy for cheap because when the market realizes, you know, or we say when the market realizes or when we're right and the market ag agrees with us that this is a bargain price, then what do you think is gonna happen? Everyone's gonna start to pile in and you're gonna get those big moves. So again, looking at gold, I didn't get in this, I didn't get in gold, but um, I know a few people did get in gold down here. I think, um, I don't know if Chris or uh, or Mark or Hakim, or Hakim etc. You guys got involved down here because this is where we were looking at and look at what happened. Yeah, look at what happened. So you, so whoever held, yeah, whoever understood that gold is a safe haven asset, yeah, and got in around here, I think it was yeah we were looking at gold around here yeah that was it there it was i think there was the uh the price a trade has got in on so i know for a fact if you guys have held this yeah from a risk reward perspective that was the setup right there entry there would have been the risk would have been maybe 13 and you're looking at at least, you know, 
15 to 1 type trade, 14 to 1 type trades, 13 to 1 type trade at the moment. So, and that was understanding what the value and what typically happens in a risk off scenario. While other traders were, you know, um, probably out and chasing price, you might have lost at certain levels here, you might have lost there. But if you maybe, regardless of how many trades you took, yeah, three, four, five trades, all you got to do is be right once, but also hold the trade and all those, you know, two, three, four losses and nothing in comparison now. You're holding the trade, taking bits off and uh, just accumulating. There you go. That's it. So that's why risk reward is king. Win rates don't mean, um, don't really don't mean a thing, if you know what I mean. It's not, it's only, it only, you know, makes you feel good, if you know what I mean, in, in the short term. But long term, all we're doing is, is uh, understanding value, guys, yeah? So... Watch this video over and over again when you're reminded um, of, uh, you know, you're going through, you know, maybe a level doesn't work out or a couple of levels don't work out for you. Just be reminded of this. This is what it is. None of us know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows which level is going to work. We just play the probabilities. And then once we're in, we hold the trade um, if it still agrees with our fundamental um uh, bias and sentiment can also drive prices sentiment can also be in our direction as well all right guys take care and i will speak to you soon so if what i'm saying resonates with you why not check out trading180.com there is a selection process to trade my supply and demand zone forex strategy i'm only looking to work with uh, individuals with the right mindset you know who are hard working as well so um check that out and access really for less than one pound a day. This Some of the strategies in here are not for beginners. So if you don't know what supply and demand is, please check out all of my supply and demand videos. I have hundreds of videos on YouTube, so you can check that out first. Um, guys, take care and until the next video, have a good one.